In just the first five days of May, over 70 countries and territories broke heat records. And then also, the U.S. has seen the most tornadoes within its history within the month of April. And then also, Brazil has seen the worst flooding in over 80 years. And of course, you can't forget about the devastating and historic flooding in Texas, too, as well. And then Latin America is being completely devastated by increasing temperatures. So Brazil had the hottest day ever in May. And then, of course, Bolivia had the hottest night ever in May. So definitely some shocking statistics about increasing global temperatures. Then record-breaking, deadly humid heat waves have completely engulfed East and West Africa, especially within the month of April. So the capital of Africa, Niger, had the hottest night ever in May too as well. So definitely some shocking statistics. And then Southeast Asia had the hottest night ever in May. So it was basically so bad in Southeast Asia that a lot of the businesses and schools had to shut down. So definitely some shocking statistics, you know, about these increasing global temperatures. And of course, with these increase of temperatures, you have to expect more extreme weather, especially record-breaking rainfall, and then, of course, flooding, too, as well. And another perspective within this whole situation is that our current infrastructure, our buildings, our roads, and so forth, our infrastructure was made for the 20th century, and it was made for the 20th century climate, especially the rainfall, the temperatures. But our climate in our society is moving beyond the 20th century. So this is why we're experiencing a lot more heavy rainfall, increased temperatures and flooding. So it may be that our 20th century infrastructure may not be able to handle this new era of extreme weather, especially rainfall and the heat stress on buildings. And a lot of our cities are not made to handle such flooding and volume of waters on the streets and so forth. So definitely has to be more updated infrastructure, more draining systems and so, so forth to meet this 21st century weather patterns. So, and of course, the most vulnerable people within this whole situation is going to be the poorest communities. So the global South will definitely be the most impacted by these drastic changes in weather. And if you think that this current migration crisis is bad, it's going to get really terrible within the next decade or so. So once you have all of these increased temperatures and flooding and so forth, these people in these vulnerable communities, especially the global south, they're going to move to more temperate locations, more temperate countries. So it's going to be pretty amazing. I can definitely see a dystopian future where we're going to have these mass migrations of people from the global south to these more wealthier nations. So it's going to be a future full of, you know, floods, wildfires, earthquakes, and so forth. So, and many people say that the people within the upper notches of society, especially, you know, like the global north, they're not doing enough to protect these vulnerable communities. And what a lot of people don't realize is that whatever happens to the poor, it also, it will eventually impact the upper notches of society too as well. So I guess the concept that's kind of going around is that the global South is not important enough to protect from the devastating impacts of climate change. And a lot of people blame these fossil fuel industries and so forth, not taking the responsibility 
to really protect these global South communities and even poor and lesser to do communities in America too as well. And a lot of the, you know, vulnerable communities in Texas were completely devastated by floods because the infrastructure is not updated to this new weather system and weather patterns and more extreme weather that we've been experiencing too. And a lot of the scientific community insists that they've never seen extreme weather so bad where it's basically devastating all corners of the globe at the same time. So these are definitely historic conditions and events. And then a lot of scientists are also concerned with the heating of ocean temperatures. And not only are ocean temperatures heating, but they're also increasing. Ocean levels are increasing too as well. And one of the main causes for that is due to the fact that glaciers are melting 